Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. On Fridays, we talk about the product owner role in Scrum. We talk about patterns and anti-patterns that relate to ours and the team's collaboration with the product owner. And we've also put together a course to help you navigate that relationship. There's 18 modules, nearly eight hours of tools, techniques, videos, handouts, presentations you can use to help you and your team work better with your product owner. The course is available at bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. All lowercase, all one word, that's bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. And now on to the show, the product owner show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our TGIF and the product owner episode this week with Lucia Alarcon. Hi, Lucia. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Lucia, Friday is our product owner Fridays here on the podcast, and we want to explore different aspects. We'll start with a bad example because we want to end up on a high, obviously. I mean, after all, it is Friday. So let's start there. What might have been, Lucia, the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career? So what I observed with one of the product owners that I work with is this person was completely and utterly overloaded with work. This person had a very unhealthy work volume. So their approach to being a product owner was pretty much random scattered of requests everywhere and um, forwarding things everywhere and, uh, you know, like providing direction or decision making in the very last minute. It was very difficult to kind of like provide value and support and give value from the perspective of the team and my role with as a scrum master, because basically it was always a bit of a surprise what was going to happen with this product owner, you know, like one day a request forward from somewhere else uh, with no context. And then this day it was like, oh yeah, we are doing this tomorrow. And so I was uh, very scattered and, um, you know, like uh, this person was not able to attend meetings either. And it was a little bit strange because we tried to reach out and say, is there any other stakeholders that we could, you know, like connect with that would support the, you know, like the, um, the direction of the project and the product and that we could bring in. And um, this person had a bit of an interesting kind of like polarizing feeling towards it. On one hand, they would need them, but on the other hand, like need the support, but on the other hand, they would keep the support perhaps a bit hidden from us in the sense that like they would not uh, facilitate or enable us to communicate directly with all other stakeholders. So he became a little bit of a firewall? Yeah, 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 basically, yeah. One of the things that from from this description, I can definitely identify some of those stress-related uh, coping mechanisms, right? When there's too much work, we try to do things in a hurry and we just, you know, kind of send requests everywhere just to make sure that we, we did something on a particular topic, even though we might not be comfortable with it or not feel sure about it. But, you know, we want to keep the team busy. That's something I hear a lot, by the way, right? We, we don't want the team to not be busy. And uh, as a scrum master, I, I take that as a the we want the team to be busy. I take that as an example of the lack of prioritization, not of the work, like the the stories or or features that the PO is given the, giving the team, but rather the lack of prioritization from a business perspective. And I, I'll I'll give a, a concrete example just to try to illustrate this, which is that the product owner, as we talked about on Monday the product owner's responsibility is to clarify what needs to be done. And uh, great teams actually don't need a lot of guidance on, on how that is done. They will set up their own guidance. They will even suggest things. They will help the product owner create ideas. 
But the PO's responsibility is really to be clear on what needs to be done, right? Like, you know, uh, are, are we going to add credit card payments or not, right? The team can figure out how if we just tell them that clearly. But of course, when POs are overloaded, they tend to forget about that and they tend to think that, okay, the only way I can keep the team busy is to give them work, so I'll just give them whatever work comes to mind, right? Like, you know, create the page where you can add credit card information. And I'm like, okay, we can do that, but what happens next? Is this a recurring charge or is this this a one-time charge? Do we need to do validation with the bank or or do we just send that to a a third-party payment processor? And which third-party payment processor are we using? And so on and so forth, right? When the PO could have very simply said, we need a way to to charge for subscriptions. And then, boom, the team can come up with ideas and suggestions and and, uh, um, contribute to the PO. So coming back to the prioritization point, uh, I don't know if this was the case, and I would like to hear from you about that, Lucia. But for me, very often, the PO tends to prioritize the details of the work to be done instead of the reason why whatever might be needs to be done. Yeah, um, I think it's important to have a strategy behind your product, a vision, you know, like a roadmap that guides decision making. So it's not about what stakeholder pushes stronger for whatever they need specifically. It's more about what are we trying to achieve overall? What's our vision for this project and use constant iterations to measure, you know, like what's the response we're getting for from our consumers. So when you lack that, then prioritization gets down to details and gets down to features and gets down to whatever pops up first, whatever is top of mind. And uh, I think in this particular scenario that we that I was describing, there was a real missed opportunity to bring different expertise to help in that prioritization from the perspective of, you know, like from technical perspectives, from marketing perspective, how can we organize work in a way that will bring you more value uh, often and more soon instead of just scattered uh, features here and there with no connections and uh, switching constantly what we're doing with the product because it's it's just whatever it's yeah it, it's the scattered approach the top of mind approach as you were saying yeah. that's a, a a great example of an anti-pattern all right so we're done with the anti-pattern now and we want to hear a good story a great inspiring story of potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with lucia Cool, cool. Okay, so um, one product owner that I work with had a, a very constant practice of looking what were what were the trends in the market, what were competitors doing, reach out to talk to different people in the company outside the company, sharing that information, reaching out for feedback looking into different ways to, you know, like visualize that. Um, So this product owner had a very consistent practice that pointed to look at the bigger picture, but also sharing the bigger picture with the wider company and with um, their team, which I thought it was quite powerful because I haven't actually seen that happening that often, unfortunately. And the fact that this person was being consistent in sharing this information built a culture of actually looking to the bigger picture, reaching out for feedback and uh, asking good questions about what is it that we're doing and how we're doing it in comparison with others. So that consistency was the powerful aspect of this person's um, uh, approach to work. So you definitely make it clear that, you know, the consistency was a big part of of the work that this PO was doing, not only the things that 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 the PO was doing, but also the consistency of, you know, constantly talking about these things. Um, Why do you think that made an impact, though? Like, what was the 
reaction of the rest of the organization? What were the the thoughts? What were the behaviors you saw around, not the PO, but around the PO that tell you that this consistency and this way of sharing information and, and the questions he was looking and the feedback he was getting was so powerful? I think it was uh, the invitation for discussion. People would progressively engage in different topics uh, of conversation that he was opening up by sharing this information. So I think what was valuable is that the fact that he was consistent helped in inviting people that perhaps wouldn't have jumped into engaging in a conversation if this information was shared every once in a while with big band sort of uh, communications, you know? And uh, as people had opportunities to interact in discussions and um, perhaps get that enjoyment of learning and interacting in discussions, then that would build up confidence for people to interact more, engage more, and that's when culture gets shaped, you know, when you make a practice something common and accessible for everyone, then others will follow, you know, if it's a positive practice that helps. So I think this product owner was very good at enabling people to have relevant discussions and modeling what that looked like on a consistent basis. Yeah, I really like how you phrase it, that the fact that it is uh, sharing of information and feedback happened often, it created an, a, an atmosphere, a culture of inviting for conversation. And this kind of reminded me of one of the critical roles of the Scrum Master, which is not in the Scrum Guide. You won't hear about it anywhere except here on the podcast, of course, because we talked about we talk about this all the time, which is this aspect of the Scrum Master being a key enabler for conversations that need to happen. So if we're working with a product owner and we don't see these conversations happening, we can create that invitation. We can create that space for conversation around feedback, customer interaction, and uh, visualizing data, setting the vision. We can create that conversation. So this kind of reminds me that great POs very often have a great partnership with Scrum Masters, specifically in the aspect that the Scrum Master is able to help the PO create those invitations for conversation. What do you think about that, Lucia? Yes, definitely. And I think there are kind of like almost two sides of the coin, right? Because what you want from the teams is not only an understanding of Agile so they can put it to their own service in their work, but also an understanding of the product for the same reason, because you want their skills to be at the service of a product vision and the combination of both aspects it's really powerful because you're giving someone that it, perhaps their skill set is, I don't know, let's say based on web development or testing or design, you're opening up their skill set by sharing this information and opening the discussion. And then they can use Scrum and they can use knowledge of the product and the vision and the strategy and put two and two together. And then it's so much more powerful for the overall benefit of the team and the company. So definitely an important thing to try to um, build in this partnership of Scrum Masters and POs. We have this Coach Your Product Owner e-course. Uh, I'll put the link on the show notes. But this conversation, and thank you for that, Lucia, just gave me an idea for a new module, which is the Product Owner and Scrum Master as an invitation or a constant invitation for communication, right? So talking about how do we work with product owners so that they are able to invite their stakeholders for that continued conversation? And also we as Scrum Masters are able to create those invitations for the PO and the team and the necessary stakeholders to have that, that feedback. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I have colleagues that have a constant, constant practice on seeing what's out there and sharing it, I really appreciate it and respect it because I think one of the main things that gets in the way for many colleagues in this industry is you know like the amount of work that we get sometimes uh, um, you've got scrum masters with multiple teams 
uh, running multiple projects or, you know, like uh, software development projects. So it is hard to get into a practice of finding good information and sharing it because you want to do it well. And if you've got five teams that you're looking after <laughs> or whatever, you know, like it's very hard. So when I see people actually making a commitment to this type of practices, I think it's really powerful. Absolutely. Great example indeed. Lucia, unfortunately, we're getting close to the end. But before we do go, where can we find out more about you and the work that you're doing? So I am on Instagram and LinkedIn. Feel free to connect. I think we're going to leave the link in the, in the show notes. For sure. So please feel free to reach out. I'd love to chat about anything or things agile. I'm always keen. So thank you. Absolutely. So dear friends out there, do reach out and uh, share with Lucy what you thought about the episodes. And also, if you have questions, go ahead and uh, connect. Very good, Lucy. It's been a pleasure. So thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So it's been a pleasure for me. Thank you. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over. But there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. Join us at scrummastertoolbox.com forward slash podcast and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more week full of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.